I've been, uh, I've been listening to and enjoying music uh, for as long as I can remember in my life. Some, sometime in the mid to late 1950s, uh, our dear old dad went out probably to Sears and bought a stereo console uh, that had a, a turntable and two speakers and a uh, place to hold r record albums. Um, it was the size of a small car, actually. Uh, and everybody in our family, there were six of us, um, contributed to uh, the collection of records that we had. So it was a pretty eclectic uh, bunch of music uh, from uh, Benny Goodman and Glenn Miller from my dad to George Beverly Shea from my mom and my brothers would add Little Richard and Elvis and my sister Burl Ives and the Kingston Trio and, and others. And I've never stopped uh, pursuing new music, buying music, listening to it and loving it. And uh, in the early 1970s, I discovered this sort of country, real quirky country bluegrass group called uh, Dan Hicks and the Hot Licks. And uh, I was really fond of uh, them. And they had, a, uh, they had a song that was a particular favorite of mine. It was called, uh, How Can I Miss You When You Won't Go Away? And that brings me to this moment. <clears throat> I promise I'm leaving tomorrow. <clears throat> I had to call uh, a young man who I'm very fond of who works in, our, in the front office of uh, the church named Matt Diffender for he's sort of our communications director and he puts the spire together in the bulletins and lots of other things and I called him two weeks ago and I said Matt if you put one more picture of me in the spire I'm gonna come over there and do something unchristian to you and <clears throat> I hope he I hope he got the message well Clay is uh, certainly getting everything out of me as uh, <laughs> this is my last day of employment here at Woodmont Christian Church and I'm delivering three sermons. Uh, of course, if the truth be known, I was thrilled that Clay invited me to be here in this capacity today. It was, his invitation was frankly very generous and thoughtful as it allows me to do something very important, and that is to say thank you. Now, it would be unfair of me to start naming names after almost 40 years of membership here in this congregation, I would surely leave out the names of some very special people. So this morning, I'm going to offer this broad but very sincere thank you to all of you present here, to those that may be lingering on holiday vacations, to many who have moved to other towns, other states, and even other countries, and still others that have shuffled off this mortal coil and crossed the Jordan. Together you have been our extended family from the moment a young couple walked into this sanctuary with a newborn baby girl in 1980, through the arrival of her two brothers and in fact the birth of her own two children, to this very moment as Sarah and I prepare to offer a goodbye for now and relocate to a tiny island off the coast of Georgia. So much has happened during this span of almost 40 years, most of it lovely and uplifting, accompanied by a handful of inevitable bumps in the road. During our time as members of Woodmont Christian Church, we have been led and spiritually guided by five dedicated senior ministers, 
a few transitional interim ministers, and a wonderful assortment of talented and committed associate pastors. And although each of those senior ministers has, has had a po positive impact on our church, I am of the opinion that Clay Stockard's tenure has been exceptional on many levels. Now, this statement cannot be defined as brown nosing because, as I said earlier, I'm within the last 12 hours of my employment here, so there's really nothing I can gain from saying that. Uh, I mean it quite sincerely. And I encourage all of you to continue supporting Clay's leadership and vision. He's a great fellow with a keen intellect, a love for the Lord, and a pastor's heart. Growth in membership, which has been very evident in recent years, is certainly one sign of health in any congregation, but I believe there are other indicators that are equally or even more important. Having had the privilege to work in the area of missions and outreach in recent years, I have marveled at the enthusiasm and generosity of this community. The need is infinite, locally, regionally, and internationally, but so many of you have stepped up in myriad ways. There will always be more to do, but I commend you for the ways you have embraced the challenges. <clears throat> if you haven't gotten involved in any of our missions or outreach, the next time an initiative is announced, I implore each of you to drop what you're doing and go forth, as so many in this congregation do and answer the call to serve, and in so doing, help usher in the kingdom of God. I have so loved working with the remarkable staff Clay has assembled. Each area of ministry seems to be thriving and full of life, from the children to the geezers, from the youth to the CWF, from the young adults to Farrell's remarkable work in pastoral care, from Sunday school to worship. I know it will continue because of the gifts and commitments of these big-hearted people. And I want to stay, state now very clearly that I consider it one of the great privileges of my life that you allowed me to work with the young people of this church. What a joy it's been. They kept me in stitches, and they got on my nerves. <laughs> and I will never forget them. Now, I know I said I wouldn't mention any names, but I've changed my mind. <clears throat> what are you going to do, fire me? Uh, I'll miss many things about Woodmont. But there is one component of our worship I hope you never take for granted, and that's the music. This congregation is blessed with world-class talent of all varieties. The thing is, that talent needs to be identified, booked, organized, led, assembled, encouraged, coaxed, and on several occasions filled in for at the last minute. You may not know this, but the individual with by far the longest tenure on the Woodmont staff is the man who makes sure all of this gets done. Over the years, he has become like a brother to me. We were born in the same year. We love the same music. We share a quirky sense of humor. We read and discuss the Old Testament and have sat and talked in the Campbell Stone Room for 30 minutes before the 9.30 service every Sunday morning for the past 12 years. His faith and his ability to express it is unparalleled. Michael Graham is a prize, and I just wanted to say that. <clears throat> Father,
Finally, I think it's, <clears throat> excuse me, I think it's appropriate that I mention one other name. He's here every time the doors are opened. He's quiet and he's humble, but his presence is palpable. He was actually here when the foundation was laid for this beautiful sanctuary, and so he remains. Actually, I'm pretty certain he was present when the foundations were formed next door at Calvary Methodist and across the street at Woodmont Baptist and down the road at Hillsborough Church of Christ and over at St. Henry's and at St. George's and Alameda. I actually knew him before we joined Woodmont, but now I know him much better. Much of what I know about him, I learned from knowing you. If I had never known him, I would have been left to my own devices. And my own devices include anger, vindictiveness, envy, arrogance, and greed. My own devices include a reluctance to forgive others and an inability to forgive myself. Left to my own devices, I'm not a very nice person. But he knew me, and he knew I needed help. And he lifted those burdens off my shoulders and nailed them to a tree. He led Sarah and me to this church because he knew I needed this kind and gentle place. If you don't know him, I encourage you to make his acquaintance. He's called by many names, the bread of life, the good shepherd, the light of the world, the way, the truth, and the life. I call him Jesus. I call him Savior. Goodbye for now, dear friends. I am eternally grateful for all of your kindness to me and my family. God's richest blessings to each of you. Amen.